people here this morning. You don't even know. You walked in here this morning and you didn't, you didn't come here with the intention to be baptized. But my prayer, my prayer for you this morning is that through the word and through the powerful working of the Holy Spirit, that you will be baptized. If you haven't been baptized, that you will be baptized. And it, it will not be through my words, but it will be through the word of God that you are drawn towards taking this big step. Let's look at some of these things. I said the first question was, what does baptism mean? Now quite simply, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna rush through all these, quite simply, our English word for bat baptism stems from the, the Greek word baptizo. Now, baptizo in the Greek means to dip, to submerge, or to make overwhelmed. Now, I don't know about you, but right there, another commonly asked question is already answered. Just in the, just in the, in the, in the, the, uh, the meaning of the word baptism, we see that it means to fully submerge. Why must I get baptized? The short answer is twofold. It's got everything to do with lordship and with discipleship. Lordship, because we read in Matthew, uh, Matthew 28 verse 19, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And if you go read in the, in the Amplified Bible, it actually says, go and baptize them into the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we give our hearts and our lives to Christ, we surrender ourselves to God. And if we surrender ourselves to Him, we conform to His Lordship over our life. Can I please get an amen? Secondly, if we look at discipleship, as disciples, we become followers of Christ. And I'm sure if you, if you go and you go study the, 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 the New Testament, You'll see that Jesus gave, well, he trained his disciples in the ways of God. And they followed him in all that he did. In other words, he was, he was an example to them. And there we can take Matthew 3, verses 13 to 17, and the word says this, says the following. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, in, uh, I need I need you to, to baptize me. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up from the water. At the mo uh, and at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now friends, if we, if we call ourselves disciples of Christ, followers of Christ, then we are going to follow in the ways of Christ. In this scripture, Christ gives us prime example. And John rightfully said at this point in time, he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to baptize you. You are the one that needs to baptize me. But you know what? If you go study the word, you will see that all of these things, the baptism of Jesus by John, Jesus dying on the cross and rising again from, from the grave, it was all foretold so that no one can turn around and say, but this is something that has been made up. Many years before it happened, the prophets wrote these things down. You sitting here this morning and you, and you may be asking yourself the question, but when should I be baptized? Let's look at three scriptures quickly. I'm gonna read those three scriptures and then I'm gonna answer that question. When should we be baptized? In Acts 2 verse 38 it says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 8 verse 36 to 38 says, As they traveled along the road, 
they came to the water and this this was philip and the eunuch they came to some water and the eunuch said look here is water what can stand in the way of my being baptized and he gave orders to the chariot to stop and then both philip and the eunuch went down to the water and philip baptized him Acts 16 verses 32 to 33 where it speaks of Paul and Silas where they were where they were were beaten and they were thrown in jail and at midnight they sang praises to the Lord and we know that the the walls open as the earth shook violently it says the following he then brought them out and asked sirs what must I do to be saved and they replied believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your and your household then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house at that hour of the night the jailer took them and washed their wounds then immediately he see uh, he and all his household were baptized three things that we see in the scripture you must be saved before you are baptized in other words you must have at one point in your life got to a place where you say Lord I accept you as my Lord and my Savior that sinners prayer that we pray every Sunday after the service where we say Lord as the word says if I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I confess with my mouth that God raised him from the grave then the word says Jesus says then I am saved if you are looking for a prerequisite that'll be it to give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you know what we're not gonna make it very difficult this morning we're not gonna overcomplicate things we're gonna get to the call very soon once I'm done with the scriptures and I'm gonna call those who already put their names down that wanted to be baptized or that wants to be baptized but I'm also gonna make a call for those people that have not put their names down and we're also going to make a call for those people who have not got to the point of giving their hearts and their lives to the Lord and you will be able to do it right here today and just as the jailer and his family who in the one moment gave their hearts to the Lord and the next moment they were baptized you too will have that wonderful glorious opportunity today what is the spiritual significance of, the, of baptism? A lot of people ask. In actual fact, to put it in, in very plain terms, we're gonna have a funeral today. Now, a lot of people might not agree with that. They say, listen, I didn't come here. Are the people gonna hold me under the water for, or until I see Jesus? No, no. We're gonna have a big funeral service here today where the old, is going to die and the new is going to rise with Christ and you know what like I said in the beginning there's scriptural references for all of this 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says the following therefore if anyone is in Christ in other words I have given myself to the Lord he is a new creation all things have passed away and behold all new things all things have become new the act of going under the water and rising up again is a is a picture demonstration of what Christ went through and listen to how beautifully how beautifully it is put in in in, in the book of Romans and I'm gonna make a few statements now and back it up with scripture the first one is he died who is he Jesus he died and I died in him Romans 6 verses 6 to 7 says for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin the next statement is he was buried and I was buried 
with him. Listen to what Romans 6 verses 3 to 4 says. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism. Did you hear what I said? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus was raised, raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The next statement is, He was raised and I have new life in Him. Romans 6 and again, I'm going to read verse 4, but from verse 4 to 5, it says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Jesus, Jesus was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. One more scripture and then I'm going to start calling people forward. He ascended and I ascended in him. Ephesians 2 verse 6 says it beautifully. It says, and God raised up with Christ and, and God raised up with Christ, raised us up with Christ, sorry, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Friends, let it not be my words that draw you forward this morning. You've heard all these questions answered and not answered by clever interpretation, but purely through the word of God. That which the, the disciples wrote down through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, because the word says that the entire word of God is God breathed God inspired word and we were praying for you even before you came into the service we we've been praying for you actually the whole morning saying Lord if there's if there's people that are gonna come in today Lord and they're not certain they're not sure whether they should go through the waters or not Lord we pray that through your word and through the powerful working of the Holy Spirit that you will be the one that convinces them to come forward.